No. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to episode 16. And it's been a while, but we're finally back. Everyone was away last week. Literally, we all traveled. Everybody traveled, <laughs> which is which is which is which is interesting. But um, thank you. For joining we all us. needed to have that moment. We we were all like, "Nope, I'm out." <laughs> yeah. It was one of those because you know you sent me an email. You're like, "Oh, I can't." Man. I was like, "No, it's fine, man." Warren's out of the country, and Sam and I are traveling, so <laughs> it really doesn't matter. But thank you for joining us on this week's episode of the weekly. Everyone is back. I have, of course, Mr. Juan back now. How you doing, man? Hey, doing real good. I, I'm I'm super sore from all of the beat sabering what I've been doing. Yeah, man. I saw you like mm, mm. Yeah. like all those old dance moves that are coming out. You need to watch that video on New Egg, man. Cause like dude, my fitness tracker is looking real good right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, VR it will make nice. your fitness tracker look good. Oh, so I have this little Acer mixed reality headset, and both my wife and I have been playing it, and we have to let it dry out. Like, over oh. <laughs> it's so gross. Our VR is, is legit filthy. Okay, it's hilarious. Okay. okay, and of course we have Sam, aka Black Eye Underscore Mazinga Man. Hello, hello, hello. And finally, the one and only Mr. Warren Bowman. How was Mexico? Uh, it was, it was, it was interesting. <laughs> no, no, it was a good time. All right, good time. A lot of sun burning, but a good time overall. All right, cool. All right, let us kick it off this week. We've got some uselessnesses and we've got a few topics. First off, YouTube Music. Finally here. Subscription for, I believe, was it $12 or so? $11.99. Um, 11 yeah, 12 bucks. Um, thoughts? I think it's useless because we already have a program that covers this, but they're making it a premium. And it sounds like... Uh, Competing what, aspects of Google are making what, things that they shouldn't. What's the program that covers it? If you get Google Music, no, it doesn't yeah. cover it the same way. What? It, it YouTube doesn't. Red, YouTube no, covers this. this. It's a combination of YouTube yes, yes, and yes, yes, um, yes, yes, uh, yes. Google Play Music. But the, uh, the no, no, no. Here's 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 where I say it doesn't cover it. You got to remember, Google Play is a traditional music streaming service. YouTube Music is going to include things that not necessarily are on. Google Play, so you have a lot of independent things that could show up on there. You have a lot of other remixes and remakes that might not actually be able to get through onto Google Play Music, but actually will show up on YouTube Music through that player instead. So when you're looking at the libraries and not necessarily giving you the same content, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, duplicate it, content there. But it's still very confusing, though. Again, like as you're explaining, I'm going, huh? Why should I still? I, that's what no, no, my brain was doing. So, right so, so, what, what, I, I what is the you. licensing thing for this? That's that's the question, right? What? How does licensing look for this? If if Google has to license um, the, the, the 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 video or the audio for um, YouTube, it might as well just license it for Google Play Music as well. So, I did do two different pools of licenses now? Yeah, because you don't have, you, know, you got to remember, sampling and clearing is a different thing. Like YouTube does not handle when it comes to songs. But so, but so they, Music which, does but, have channels dedicated to like almost DJ channels. So basically people yeah. who are sampling things, like you're saying. So I, I'm, I'm still not getting the difference, man. Yeah, but it, it's a little bit, the the licensing model is different that they go through there versus going through there and it, it, it it's confusing but i get why they have two of them it's like it basically you have to think on the fact of what are things such as mixtapes and and freestyles and other little sort of things independent artists that can't they won't get any exposure on google play but they'll get the exposure on youtube music a lot more than they will on google play music as well too that's another reason why that's sort of that's sort of there to exist. you also have the mixture of the fact that it's, it's an app that does not only it not only does it you know do your music but you can watch the video too and you can choose between the two if you want to have yeah, them at the, the same time you, you know the google play music does the same thing if i went it, does, it does it but it doesn't it doesn't it horribly. To do that. It does it, i think it, it might have removed it but it used to do no, that it's still there, one of the, it, if you want to watch a music sucks. video you it's but they could just make it better. I, I don't see where they're doing anything totally out of the box they're that not. Um, that play music or YouTube wasn't doing already. I, I think this is a, a, an overreach um, with, with, with no, an addition. You got to remember how many YouTube's, how many um, current artists got discovered basically being on YouTube as well too. So people like a yeah. Sean, people like a Sean Mendez would not be Bieber, right? Was no, it, Bieber, Bieber, no, Bieber, Bieber. no, he's discovered by Usher. 
Mm. Um, yeah, but wasn't it from was YouTube though? No. I thought it was a YouTube video. Oh no, okay. Oh, yeah. I think I think he went to a concert or something. It's a different story. Justin Bieber was more traditional. He, uh, he came up the traditional way. But if you have other, you have, but you have people like the Sean Mendez who came up through YouTube. So uh -huh. and, 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 and think about you don't hear his music on Google Play or Spotify, where this is vast amount and it's extremely hard to find anything new unless you link up. The right, the right amount of songs to get to this new person versus on YouTube, which is which has, which has that algorithm that something gets popular pushes it more to the forefront more, and that doesn't necessarily happen on Google Play. I mean, so, look, I, I hear that, and you know, like imagine Zaggy is like, well, YouTube has a broader reach that broader reach reaching brand name than Google Play Music, which is true. Then just call it like I I don't like this two apps again. This just reminds me of Messenger. But no, I, I, I get, but I get <laughs> like, why I'm, I'm I get why they have, I get why they have two apps for this, and I thought the same thing too. But you got to remember, YouTube isn't a traditional music service. You can't look at that thing as having the same database and catalog organized streaming service that Google Play does, which also includes your own content as well too when you upload to it. That isn't the same thing. Oh, as what YouTube, I know it's not YouTube the same thing. Is. I think I think they just needed to sit down properly and look at how they could actually have created this yeah. one well, instead actually, of this. I, instead I, of I don't think they can. I don't think they can because you would you would get a mess. You literally would get a mess. This, I mean, this is a, this is if, a if mess this is already. The, if this is the case, then well, no, it's not. It's not so much a mess do. because because in the end of the day, if you're paying for, if you pay for one, you're getting both anyways. Yeah, that's you, true. You, you just use one or the other. You get both I, I, dollars. I think you get all three, right? Yeah, you get all three. Yeah, you, you get, get all three. three. You get Google Play Music, you get YouTube Red, Red and you get um, um, YouTube Music. Music, yeah. So you get them all anyways. Um, I, I'm definitely, because I'm a Google Play user and I've used YouTube Music as well too, just because it was a part of Red. And I, and, and there are definite places where like, I want to hear, so, like, like, for example, there's a there's a song that I really like called Can You Feel My Heart by, um, oh, what is her Kenny name? G? God, no. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm not you. I'm not you. Um, well, I like you. Uh, uh, can, can You Feel My Heart by Bring Me to the Horizon. Now, they have the original song on there that you can listen to, but they've done live versions of that song that are not available on albums, but they are available to stream on YouTube Music, which I can then download. It's a video, but then I can, I, but I can treat it as if it's like an MP3 music that's just right there when I want to listen to it. So if I want to hear live renditions of it, they're right there and available. That's something you don't necessarily get on um, on um, on uh, Google Play because not everybody does live albums like that. Not anymore. Like they like how they like how it used to be. There's no more. I don't think they do MTV Unplugged anymore uh, in, in those traditional ways. So there there are definite things that are uh, music things that are on YouTube that you might want to listen to. It's just a normal song you just want to listen to. But you can't. It, it's either hard to get to MP3 because not every. Well, we know how to do those things, but not a lot of the people know how to do those things, and they just want to listen to a stream and play it right then and there. They might want to have a live concert just going all, you know, right there for them. And you know, you don't I, typically see them publish live concert albums in the same way that they that they just throw the live concert video on YouTube for them just to listen to. Right. I, I think I think that last point, Warren, it's how much effort it takes to untangle what the service provides and what you can do with it. And even for someone like us, you, we it takes us a little while to unravel what it, why is this different? Where does it belong? Who is it good for? And, and I think that's one of the most frustrating aspects of a number of Google services launches of late. That they feel really clumsy, and I don't think they've been doing a good job. Again, like we've been complaining about Microsoft and every other company on the planet. I don't think they're doing a good job of of addressing their customer base and telling them what the pros and cons of this service might be. Again, that conveyance, there's there's like a little bit of a layer here that we have to dig through before we can untangle what is this thing, what does it do, and who might my, it be the right fit for. My, and and my, that's been just frustrating in general. But I think this is Google, this YouTube premium move is is getting the ire of a number of other backlashes. Yeah. Like Google and messaging has been a pain in my ass. So I'm still a little frustrated about that. Google and YouTube has been frustrating. So it's getting a little bit of that and it's getting all mixed together in this like, well, now we have conflicting services or do we have overlapping services or what, what do I get for my, just tell me what I get for my money. And why is this different than my YouTube TV subscription, which is a premium subscription service that doesn't give me any of the perks oh. of one of these. Well, so that's... now why why would I give you another 12 bucks a month? Well, and, that, and that's what I think has been so frustrating for well, a lot of people. I think those 
couple of key things are confusing, but that's more. I think that's being a little bit more overblown than it really, really should. I think that I think them not well, combining. No, was, I think them. I think them not combining with YouTube TV is a pretty strange thing to kind of to kind of not kind of meld this into into sort of one thing or include it as an option for you you know for YouTube TV subscribers to kind of have them maybe built into their package. I think that's one thing, but the, the, that's that that's something they can clean up late. I think at, at, at a later time. Oh, totally. I but think, that's I also. Think, why I, think I, the, that. I think the major thing that they did here was change it to something that's recognizable. It's called YouTube Premium, so it's a very easy thing to understand what it is over YouTube Red. I think that's a huge advantage. That the branding's a lot better than what it used to be. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, but my only other beef with this is, is they have a they're doing a sales technique here of offering two subscription options while really trying to show you the, the price between the other two and they make you consider buying them more expensive of option because it's only a couple bucks more so it gives you that illusion of actually it gives you the choice but even the choice to kind of have even though i think it's kind of a, an illusional choice to have to me that i don't think there should be a youtube premium then it should be a youtube music preview they should really just be offering just youtube premium just as what it is i think i think the two subscription models was confusing i think if they just offered this is youtube premium and includes our music collection and includes our video collection and our originals and everything else. And oh, you get Google Play as well to include with it for eleven ninety nine price point. I think if they just went with that, it's pretty easy to kind of understand what it does. I think when um, they, they, I think when you have music premium, it kind of you know it, it mixes things up. That I think it mixes things up badly that way. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, we're confused. <laughs> yeah. The consumers are going to be confused. Let's let's be like, again, on, it, it takes that on. amount of conversation for mm -hmm. us to untangle. But, but, but you know what? You, 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 you know what you did, Warren? You actually highlighted some really important things. Music creation, discovery for new um for new artists. That 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 should be what they're highlighting here. The idea that you're getting all these other services when you pay one price is something they should be highlighting even more. So you're doing a better job than yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Well, you got to remember. You got to remember. You, you got to remember. YouTube's main thing, surprisingly, when they announce new things, is through blog posts and never through actual videos. Yeah. I mean, and I, mean, I, and I, I don't quite get why they go that route. But I also understand why they make this because they because in the end of the day, the people that listen to YouTube on music on YouTube primarily and use it like a damn Spotify are probably going to see this and go, oh, OK, I'll, all right. Well, I guess I get more music for whatever. And I got to deal with ads and I can do this. OK. And then and, and, and they'll just go about their ways. Yeah. But um, and this is which is what the goal they want to do. But I, what I hope eventually they do is get themselves closer to an Amazon Prime sort of pricing model when they're offering these services yeah. and just including things into it. Now, I, I, I think that's that's easier said than done when they have to deal with a ton of people, a ton of different companies and a ton of different content that they don't necessarily own. So I think it's a little bit more difficult to just say, hey, we're just this and just go with it. I think they'll get I think they'll get to that point. But I think I, it's going to take some I think time. it's time for them. You're right. I think it's time for them to go with the Amazon Prime pricing model and just call it you know they have google one they just announced but i wish that was actually their overall yeah. thing where it was google one gives me google drive youtube premium youtube tv all this stuff for 99 bucks or whatever i would pay for that fine you know that at least i know that i have this whole bucket of stuff that i can tap into which is what which is what amazon did a smart way of saying like they didn't have all the services but they said this prime and then we just add the services in Prime and we tell you what the services are. And it makes it easier for consumers. And like, you know, to Sam's point, you're doing a better job. If if this thing had come out and said, oh, this is first, you, you know, the one of the main benefits you're discovering new artists, uh, I would go, okay, yeah, all right, that makes sense. You know, but they didn't mention that. So I looked at him and went, this is like Messenger all over again. Well, well, you but know? you also not the same because you not no, the no, same. no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not well, saying well, that well, that is not the same. I'm just saying that that's what yeah. it told me. But you have to look at they're using something that's a primarily a video service and trying to sell music on it, which isn't a common thing that's done. Oh so, no, no. So, so, so I think mean, that that's not the point. I'm saying that you're doing a good job. I'm saying they just did a bad job telling me. You don't have to tell me again. Yeah. They told me. They have done a bad job describing this, which is why we've had this overly long conversation, <laughs> something that we shouldn't have. And that's why it's a uselessness. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, let, let's move on to another uselessness with Snapchat.
Um, <laughs> yeah, we're, there's no way we're, we're going to get into a frustrated discussion about a web service talking about yeah. Snapchat. Type so Snapchat CEO not. reportedly released the re redesign despite warnings from designers. Mm -hmm. So now the information reports that the design was released despite reservations from Snapchat engineers and mediocre performance I'm just I'm, while you're reading. I'm just going to keep saying <laughs> trash. After CEO Evan Spiegel decided he wanted to completely revamp the app design, he gave the company engineers a short time frame in which to complete it. And some current and former employees told him 48 hours in a pizza. <laughs> that the overall goal to make the app is e easy to use, Spiegel said, wasn't adequately conveyed uh, to those working, bringing in the new design. So basically, he trash. <laughs> <laughs> There's wow. nothing else to describe this update other than what it is. It's trash. I don't even really like Snapchat like that. I, I take it. I, I use it sometimes to follow some of my friends to see what's going on or if we're all traveling somewhere. A lot of them like to use that over Instagram stories and stuff like that to be able to whatever. And I'll go through this thing, and I try to figure out what was going on beforehand. It was a lot easier to find stories and find things like that. And then they came up with this new thing, and it was just nothing but complete trash. It's like I, 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 I don't get why you would design something like this. Like this, this, there's no logic behind it. It, just, it all, all that proved to me is that wow, people will still use Snapchat even if it's a trash application. <laughs> Apparently, they still will use it. And it, the, the most diehard people, but there's other folks out there that I'm pretty sure have kind of stopped or moved, moved to Instagram stories or Facebook stories or WhatsApp stories, whatever the hell else has a story on Facebook that you can instantly tell them how your ramen came out. Um, um, that's that's one. Well, but I mean, this is this is sort of indicative of what we've been talking about Snap in general. I, the CEO's an idiot. The CEO's an idiot. The, they have not found further differentiators. They refused to be bought out by larger companies that could completely replicate what was novel or unique about take their the money and run <laughs> and do it better. I, I mean, I think if anything, if, if you're going to fight Facebook, you have to know that Facebook has the resources and the developer base to not only replicate your process, but to make it better. And <laughs> Not this, this, this sort of bullheadedness works when you have something that can't be replicated. If, so, if there was no way to copy what made Snapchat unique, then going balls to the wall, we do it our way, no one can tell us what to do, would have been charming. But here it's, it's, I feel it's, like they him, earned their defeat. I feel like him and the former CEO Uber are like best friends. Because they have like the same <laughs> mentality. Uh, and I, no, I'm gonna listen, 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 listen. No, I you're on they, point. I, I think they have the same. You. I actually was talking to someone about this in an Uber, an Uber driver about this thing. But he has that that same sort of this is my baby and this is what I'm gonna roll with. And I'm just gonna bullhead spirits. I think what I'm doing is right, even though what I'm doing is dead wrong. And I should be hiring someone else to do these things for me. And I should be sitting in the back just shutting up and collecting checks. Instead, he's gonna keep doing these things thinking he should be thinking he's doing something yeah, he, be better for himself. What, what you're describing totally is a get, bad board of directors. Yeah, yeah what no, you're describing. But, but no, because, I'm not I'm describing a bad CEO. No, it's no, no, dude. This is not a CEO issue, it's a board of directors issue. Um look what happened to Steve Jobs when he was doing the same thing at Apple. He got pushed out. Um, that should happen. Look at what happened when um, the, the guys from Google um, decided to start a company. Their board is like, yeah, you guys need a grown up in the room. Look at what happened to Facebook. He needs a grown up in the room. Look at what happened. Like any successful tech company needs a grown up in the room. These guys don't have a grown up in the room. And it's their board that needs to come together and say, we need to force these guys to have, you know, a grown up in the room and they haven't done that. And, and, and that's why the, um, the, the, the uh, what's it called? Uber CEO is gonna, is, is put, was basically essentially pushed out because they need a grown up to do things. Um, and, and, and it's, 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 he needs, to, the, the CEO needs to understand passion versus practicality. He needs to understand like, if he's this passionate about it, but you know he's not the right person for it, you need to just, you need to give up your gig and just sit on the board. You still own the baby, it's still your thing, but let somebody else take it to another level. You can't go this far anymore. And I understand. What do you mean? Like, listen, I understand that. Like, like some guys, like they're so invested in what their company is. It's their identity to a point where like, if you try to take it from them, it's like they can't separate themselves from it. It's just who they are and they're never going to give it up. Mm -hmm. I mean, but there's plenty of roles and positions that you could be in where it's still your thing and not running the day to day of it and allowing someone else to create your create your make your creation better than what it was before. That's what you're supposed to do when people throw a sack of money at you. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Let's move on to, well, I won't call it a full uselessness, but it has huge potentials to be there. Uh, Google's <laughs> selfish ledger, um, mm-hmm. which is an internal memo or at least internal video memo that uh, was leaked um, uh, that showcases how Google is trying to conceptualize data uh, into personal identity that is really not yours. I don't know if you guys watched the, the video. Yeah, I, I saw the video. I haven't had a chance yet to yeah. see it. I, I think it's still, it's still still a question that, that, that I raised not too long ago. When do people start understanding that our IDs aren't just our social security numbers, our passports, our driver's license, and our IDs are everything that makes up our digital being, our digital presence? And that's what I think this video kind of alludes to. And at the end of the day, it, it's a beautiful... I would say it's, it's a beautiful argument for machine learning and how you can make better decisions, even on an individual level, if you give in to machine learning. But it's yeah. also a cautionary tale <laughs> that who holds that data has control over your personality, over your identity, over your digital life. So you have to be very conscious of that. Looking at the video, actually, 80% of it, I was like, whoa, I cannot wait for this to become reality. Oh, yeah. And see, the other 20%, I was like, oh, this could be bad. No, you see, I was, I was watching the video and I went, okay, this is nice, this is nice, until they got to that point that says, and at some point, it will now be supplying input for the user. You know, there was a point in the in the video where the the narrator basically just turned it from you know you're supplying data, it is it is outside sources, everything is yeah. coming in, and it literally just turned to it will supply and we find if it cannot find something for you, it will make something for you. Yeah, and no, that, that was that, that was the scary part. part. I was like that's the scary part. Ah, uh, oh, okay. So you're telling me that you will now decide what I you think I like. Not just by looking for things that are matching, but you know, the, he mentioned three D printing. That if that's not there, then it would say, "Enable, what's this? I must Let's design this something Enable. specifically for it." Yeah, and then send it to me. I'm like, oh, no, not send it to me, but just that that whole concept. There. Yeah, basically send the idea to your device and basically <laughs> influence your influence your buying. Uh, I, I think it's, it's it's an amazing thing. I, I think what he, um, this Google X video was trying to say was really amazing. I, I, but but where I see the biggest the biggest um, positive from it is just being able to make better decisions. You know, if so, everyone talks about AI, which is nice, an AI assistant and all these things. But just imagine if I'm walking down to the supermarket and I'm about to pick up something, and my phone tells me, "Hey, this was grown in California." But like, and I think that there's an example of this in the video. But all these other things were grown locally. Maybe you want to buy the things that were, you know, that were grown locally. Well, okay, good. That's something I'm doing to support my community. That's something I'm doing that's more likely healthy and supports the, the, the environment as a whole. That kind of stuff is nice. But when they start going into the whole idea of social engineering and trying to say, oh, um, maybe we can stop depression before it happens, it's like, uh, how do you even tell if someone's about to be depressed? And if someone else buys into that data, like my healthcare company, can it, you know, affect me in a negative way. It's like, I don't know if I want that kind of data to be out there to tell like when I'm about to hit like a downturn emotionally. It's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, look, this is a really good idea, but no, this is an awful idea, you know, kind of thing. It's, 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 it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed uh, Juan, bag. what about you? Uh, no, I'm, I'm sharing a lot of the same sentiments as Sam. This is, you know, it's kind of like, it, it's the Star Trek effect. Think about the computers in Star Trek, uh, all the amazing things that they can do because they'd have to know every minute detail of your waking life to be able to anticipate commands and and intelligently respond to you. And that's ultimately what we want. We want to get to that point. Mm -hmm. The, the, The danger is how we get to that point being managed by companies that have a vested interest in profiting off of that information and who has control over that information. And we don't have this sort of egalitarian, uh, altruistic Star Trek society. So yeah. that that's what makes us twitchy. That's what makes us nervous. I, I, I don't see much that's really that objectionable in the video, especially given the current trends of where we're already heading um, and, and now it's just a matter of marketing. What company gives me the warm fuzzies about having my my information and what company makes me super nervous? Um, you know, I it, it's it's all marketing. But for some reason, I have less of an issue. I still have an issue, but I have less of an issue with Google manipulating my data to that extent than I would with Amazon. 
because of just recent trends and recent headlines and recent stories about those two companies. I'd probably feel even better about an Apple having access to all of my data at that kind of a granular level because they don't profit off of my information in the same way as Google does. But all of this is, you know, like that's the big uh, philosophical question that we need to unravel and untangle over the next successive generation of services because what's in that video is coming fast. It's not oh, like yeah. some pipe dream that maybe this is a future, like that old AT&T commercial during the era of Blade Runner, like you can make video calls from phone booths, you know, like that. We're not that far away. This is this oh. is coming like 2019. This is a crazy thing. This is ha I'm sorry to, to, to cut you off, but this is happening now. It's not just coming in 2019. I just finished a data science course, right? And in my data, my, my final project for that course was basically taking salary information for the state of New York. And this information came with people's names because it's public, publicly uh, publicly available information. Came with people's names. I can tell what they make, what they do for a living, and what borough they live in. Now, if I go ahead and I say I'm now a vendor and I grab information from an Amazon or a Google and say, okay, I know this person's name. Well, how did this person use? You know, how much did this person use their their, uh, their phone? And during what time of the day did this person use their phone? Are they using their phone while at work? Does does it mean that they uh, they're basically raking up overtime? I can tell a lot from just those two data sets. It's happening right now. And this is what people are researching in this day and age with machine learning and AI that is totally like, by the time 2019 and 2020 comes along, people would be blindsided by how much of their life is already known by corporations and people who can actually mine data. Yeah, so the, the question I was gonna ask you is, how long will it, will it be before- um, We're assimilated? Western governments decide <laughs> to do what China does. Because, oh. because the, here's the thing. The thing is that as we're talking about this, China is already doing this. You know, they, they have a mass amount of data for everyone because of course it's a communist country. So that's just how their society flows. <laughs> it's easier for them to flow through. How long will it take when they have that control? They can also galvanize that Western countries start looking at it and going, we either need to tap into the businesses we have or well, and, we and even control. no, and, and your fears are well founded because even beyond just an authoritarian government, we also have authoritarian corporations here. You know, it, this this is an attack on all fronts. Mm -hmm. it, it's not going to be one government that that misuses this data. It's going to be a government and an authoritarian communist regime in one part of the world. It's going to be a completely collusive marketplace in another part of the world. Um, this and is in a democracy, is going to be a security-focused um, administration after yep. some kind of massive attack happens, yep. and that is when we all decide that we will give up our freedom and let the government do things like this. It is a scary proposition when you think about it. It is not too far away. Yeah, <laughs> 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 that got dark real quick. <laughs> Take uh, okay, that black guys. mirror. We can also be creepy with technology. You yeah. suck, Sam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for thanks for this just laying out next to the black Sam mirror. Got blamed. That was the one who brought the point up. <laughs> I just finished I, one thought. I, I, I basically I gave you the past then then, then, then uh, one down had the assist and Sam went for a windmill slam dunk. <laughs> I mean, damn, man, that was like that was like a four by one hundred meter sprint. One, 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 man, we just kept passing that baton. <laughs> one like I'm staying out of this one. We want, we want, this is one words like this. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh man. Yeah, right, let's, no, but let's get into on, our yeah. Let's get to our topics today. Uh, uh, this week saw the launch of two devices. The well, the first or the bigger one was the One Plus Six. Um, the latest in line in OnePlus, uh, the device is available. It's uh, uh, not available yet. I think 20 seconds available. They had like some pre-sale that went out pretty fast. The device is a 6.28 inch smartphone with a unibrow, aka a notch. Mm -hmm. um, what's very interesting, of course, is that OnePlus made fun of Apple last year during the OnePlus 5T event, talking about the notch. And then they had one this year. Granted, oh, you know, oh. granted, we know that their designs are based off the Oppo R series. So there was no way they were going to go around it, but they shouldn't have made fun last year. Uh, of course, it, packs, it does packs in a lot of performance, 845, 68 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, headphone jack, 
Um, they've said improved cameras, a dual camera at the back, camera in the front. Uh, price is now starting at five twenty nine, so it's a little bit higher, and it goes up to six six twenty nine, I believe. Yeah, I think it's just a hundred dollar. Yeah, it's six twenty nine for the, for the two fifty six uh, version uh, of the device. Uh, all glass comes in three colors: uh, silk white, mirror black, and midnight black, or black mirror, whichever one you want to call that middle one. Um, but what do you guys think? What do you think uh, of this device? Um, we all know that OnePlus, of course, is that mid ranger. Um, and I will add a caveat once I get everyone's uh, thoughts. But Juan, what about you? What do you think about the, the OnePlus uh, Six? Um, so, so yeah, the, the I, I think you know rather than jumping into all of the the the, the phone itself, what I'd like to t say and I'll put out there is I'm really impressed by how sophisticated OnePlus has gotten from being one of my most hated companies in the way that they originally. <laughs> I think out, like, a lot of people, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, I just the most childish bullshit uh, kind of marketing to really writing the sentiment of enthusiasts and subverting what conversations people were having. So, you know, starting off the event by talking about a pair of Bluetooth headphones which would normally in every other phone release we've had over the last two years would lead to uh, a manufacturer saying that they're removing the headphone jack on their phones, but they're not doing that. Or really writing the negative sentiment online about people worried about a massive price increase and playing into that during really leaning into that during their their phone announcement to then show there was a minor price increase. But we all feel much better about this price increase because we had rumors about this being a six to seven hundred dollar device. That's really sophisticated from a marketing perspective to be able to pull that dance off. Because look at the tweets. I, I even played in. I mean, like they announced the price and I couldn't help but tweet. Oh, my God, I'm so relieved that the price isn't six hundred dollars, even though the price is still climbing. If the price had climbed with everyone having an expectation that this was going to be a four hundred and ninety nine dollar phone, people would have been pissed off about a thirty dollar price jump. So that that's what I that that's what my main takeaway was. I'm happy to see another premium mid ranger. There aren't many left, and OnePlus has gotten really savvy about how they reach out to their current fan base and how they communicate what's going on with their enthusiasts. I don't know where where E went. So I'm going to throw it to you, Sam. What do you think about the OnePlus? Uh, the, the, OnePlus the thing is, I don't use OnePlus. That's the thing. I've never used any of the devices. I'm not a big fan of... Uh, uh, I, I was not a big fan based on your marketing from before, but just looking at this device, um, I, I'm more struck by the special edition of it, the special edition, uh, special Avengers edition of it. It just looks amazing. Like if this, It looks like a phone that I would want to use, <laughs> a phone I would like to carry around for at least a week or so before I decide, okay, Avengers is now passe, move on to the next thing. But it's 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 a it's a good looking device. It has great features. Um, the uh, it, it's it has features that would rival a regular flag a flagship. It comes with an eight forty five eight gigs of RAM. I personally think if you go if you're looking for a cheap phone that is also a very, uh, somewhat of a, a, a a flagship phone, then go for it. There's nothing preventing you from going for it. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see how well they market on TV or or um, social media or uh, even just um, you know YouTube in general. Uh, it'll be an interest to see if they actually are doing a major push to bring uh, OnePlus to the forefront. Are 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 you back, E? Sorry, we we kind of jumped through the. Sorry, He's there. Warren, Warren, I'm back. Yeah, my bad. Oh, okay, good. Sorry. Um, yeah, Warren, what are you thinking? Uh, One plus six, uh, especially the current climate of thousand dollar phones. Hilariously, a five hundred dollar phone used to be a laughably expensive <laughs> pocket computer, and yep. now that is literally smack dab in the middle. Do you think that this is the move going all glass? It's going to help One Plus pivot to more mainstream. Like, can they can they fix the problems that Essential had in trying to reach out to general consumers? It's good looking phone, good features, good specs. I didn't. Was there a carrier link to this? I might have missed that part. No, no, no there, there's there no, was there's no, no announcement. I, I think they're still going going it alone. Uh, then it's it looks great, but it's kind of like okay. Uh, until uh, I think in America, until you have somebody like a T-Mobile or, 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 or something tied to you that says, "Hey, we're we're not we're, we not only can buy this unlocked, but hey, you can come to." 
T-Mobile, and I mean, and really, T-Mobile could use this as, as, as a way to compete, maybe against the Google Pixel, which gets you know exclusive to Verizon. This could be their version of it. And until I hear that from them doing this, it's like, okay, nice phone, all the geeks will buy, and then we'll be right here back to here again next year. Until they, <laughs> until they like, I, I think they got. Some, I think it's a good looking phone. It got some great specs. All the end Avengers just is very interesting, but it's like. In, in the United States, you can't get anywhere without being with one of the big three. No, no, that is, true. that is that is very true. And, that's, and, and, and I, I'm believing to think that I don't even think OnePlus cares too much about that that, that way. In the that's, uh, that's why I'm thinking they probably will go more social media focused. Because, because uh, I mean, for the, in terms of sales, I think they're looking at it as for OnePlus in terms of overall sales. They are, they are killing it in India. That is, that is. <sighs> yeah, that's true. In, and even if you are a number two or three in India, that's that is a lot. That's like beating LG in the US. And LG, so so you can for them, I think they're looking at it that way until it becomes necessary. Um, but but you're definitely right, Warren. I think you know if if they can get a T-Mobile, then that especially now that T-Mobile is going to become you know uh, T-Mobile, the new T-Mobile. I know, damn new uh, T-Mobile. They need to stop that. <laughs> they, 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 they stop with the nice covering layered so that the government doesn't look at you. Just call it for what it is. T-Sprint. them. <laughs> oh, good God. They call that thing T-Sprint. Nah, t it'd be just, it'd be just, no, at least they're not doing the stupid, like, we're Sprint Nextel. At least they stop. Oh, at least they didn't God, do that. That's terrible. They just Ooh, actually, well, maybe you just take the name Nextel. That would be nice. <laughs> Actually, I was hoping that I was hoping that they could maybe make a tier. So, like, you know, you have like a Project Fi style service where you know, you know your phone has the best compatibility for all bands across their entire Sprint and T-Mobile network, and you call that T-Mobile Sprint, like ah. the name of the name of the service. Well, you got to you got to think about what T-Mobile is taking on. It's not only just Sprint, but it's also Boost Mobile and it's also Virgin Mobile as well too. And like, uh, yeah, what is it? Fifty-four percent of the MVNO yeah. market now is under one umbrella. Yeah, one umbrella. Wow. Yeah, that, that might have I, to. I, I have a feeling a lot of that's going to get spun out into some, yeah. other, into some but, other ventures. But the other caveat I wanted to add to that is that uh, currently Samsung is has a deal at least this weekend you can grab the galaxy s9 and s9 plus for exactly the same price yeah. as a one plus six i was i was gonna say and 640 bucks so I, I was gonna say there's something really compelling about launching a phone 200 dollars less than a galaxy S, the small the little galaxy s9 until it wasn't anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and, until and samsung this, said nah, no 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 this is Flex. samsung <laughs> no, this is this ain't flexing. This is the Lavar Ball. Then they're going out there pulling a Lavar Ball. They're going, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. So, so what what does this say about this this era, this current generation of of flagship and premium phones? When we all kind of know that this pricing is specious at best, like. Yeah. No, we, we, I mean, again, this is what I'm trying to talk to my mom about because her Galaxy S5 is really long in the tooth. It's, it's, it, we really need to move her on to something else. The, the bummer is there isn't anything else to move her to. That's she nice. likes, no, she right. likes the, the, the back battery, uh, the, the back cover not being made out of glass. She likes being able to replace the battery herself. Um, and you know, water resistance was a nice feature. The Galaxy S5 brought that in, even though it had that annoying flappy port cover. Um, so, when we're talking to family and friends, all of us who are more tech inclined, like one of the biggest advantages of having one of us as a friend is to say, like, don't buy at launch, wait, I don't know, a month. And About you're gonna three see, months. <laughs> yeah, you're going to see price and drop. You're going to see these other advantages. And, and especially when you're not playing in the iOS ecosystem, like the, the Galaxy S9 is not really a $700 phone. Mm -hmm. Not 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 three months after launch because that's not an old device. And now look, you're picking it up for two hundred dollars less. Now, granted, this is only Verizon, but I does it definitely does make sense. Um, and uh, you know, it's one of those things where I think I think the reason why we have those prices is very simple. Um, I mean, it's, it's hitting those profit peaks really quick. It's like it's like a blockbuster movie. That's what they've become. They become your Avengers, your big some of blockbusters is that you know they know that they will sell well immediately and then you can now drop the price and get more people in mm -hmm. sure. that's that's what we have here which is why you know looking at this and you know if somebody were thinking well i want to pick up the one plus it looks really nice 
you're like, oh, well, the Galaxy Plus, you still have all those other, you know, lifestyle features like water resistance, yeah. wireless charging, and all that kind of stuff in there. So, yeah, man, you know, this is, this is LeVar Ball move. This is flexing, whatever you want to call it. This is Samsung just saying, <laughs> it's all right, child. You know, like, you know, Thanos is like, oh, young one, just move aside. Yeah, but I think I think at the end of the day, um, a com companies like OnePlus, and I think we're we're going to go to Huawei and uh, all the other companies that are in this mid-range phone that produce these mid-range phones, are going to keep on eating that profit from um, from Samsung, Samsung yeah. because Samsung is going to be uh, unable to justify their pricing scheme. The more and more phones like this come out with premium um, components. That actually challenge these, um, you know, high end, quote unquote, high end uh, flagship devices. It's not devices. going to matter unless they have a carrier. It's not going to matter unless they can sit next to a kiosk in a store, right next to Samsung. It's well, well, not well going that to is matter. that is partially true. But then again, you could also argue that companies like this are forcing Samsung to put yeah. the two hundred dollar discount. So there is some effect there, no matter how you look at it. It's not just OnePlus, the other companies, whether it's why we add into that yeah. and stuff like that. So I mean one um, Samsung is big dog, so they're going to be the ones who really get um leached off the most when it comes to uh percentage share. But you know, we'll we'll see. But but this is also something that I think plays into this the general perception and um what's the, what's the word that I'm trying to look for? I don't know. Anyway, this this emotional lifestyle branding effect. Are these phones really worth what companies are charging for them? And what does this mean for devaluing a potential investment? First of all, like it's like a car now. If you talk about your smartphone as an investment, then it's an investment that's guaranteed to lose you money. Um but but what does this mean you know like what why why do we have this sort of knee-jerk year-to-year reaction on increasingly expensive pocket computers that then devalue really quickly or face competition from from sources that can deliver 85 percent of the experience at 60 percent of the cost you know i it, it's it, it really does feel like we've kind of hit peak smartphone like i, I don't see that this is really going to get aggressively better or evolve in any kind of uh, meaningful way until we start moving away from the current implementation of glowing rectangle. Sorry, yeah. I, just, I just thought I'd shut it down. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the other device that launched this week, uh, the Honor 10. Uh, basically, you could say most of the, uh, the Huawei P, 20 in a cheaper smaller frame um the p10 comes with at a 5.84 inch display 1080 by 2280 because of course it has a unibrow like everybody has now mm. um it's got a six uh six gigs of ram um battery is 3400 milliamps uh this is also housing the uh Kirin processor, the 970, Android 8.1. Um, in terms of camera, it's got a 16 a megapixel and a 18, uh, 24 megapixel uh, black and white sensor. Uh, it's close to what they have on the P20 itself, not the P20 Pro. Um, yeah, it, it feels like kind of a taking the front face of a p20 and then building in a healthy amount of view 10. Yeah, exactly also. yeah i mean it's it's got a headphone jack which i think the p20 does but the pro doesn't that comes sure. with a 32 bit pack in there which i don't think the other one did so no they, they actually all have the the it's the, the, pro? the DAC isn't the DAC isn't what's important it's, no, it's I mean, often does the pro have does even i don't think the pro even had a DAC in the first place though for the for the p20 no, the P20 Pro. Pro. P20 Pro. I believe it's the same implementation as what they had on the Mate 10. So on the, this is what was frustrating about, about the Mate and the P20 was there actually is a DAC in there, kind of in the same way that Motorola and HTC implemented proprietary docs, uh, uh, proprietary dongles. So a Motorola and HTC dongle will work on a Mate 10 Pro because there is still audio hardware in there. But then they also included headphones which had their own built-in DAC. And those uh, headphones would work on 
any other device that had a USB-C port as a USB audio source. So again, it, that that made the whole thing more confusing, not less confusing as to what was actually really inside that phone. And so you can get 32-bit playback, but it wasn't very high quality, poor signal to noise ratio, very quiet amp. And I think in part because they wanted you to use the built-in, uh, the, the included earbuds, yeah. which I hate that AirPod style design. I have an interview with an audiologist talking about how those are terrible for you. Um, that, that, that was sort of the frustrating aspect of how all of that went down. Sorry. I, no, that's fine. Uh, the the device is priced at 400 euros or 471 US dollars. So it's, it's cheaper than the uh, OnePlus. Um, my own my question here is it's very interesting with the strategy that Huawei does is that you know they release their flagship and then they release the Honor version of that and the Honor devices sell well they actually do sell well uh, they do a lot of uh, good sales on Amazon um, but just what do you guys think of that strategy where it's it's a it's a very it's clearly a mirror of whatever flagship that they release on the uh, on the Huawei side what do you guys think? Not much thoughts from my end. I, I think the phone looks good, but I'm hearing, the, I'm seeing here that the camera isn't is, is, is not quite up to par. So it, uh, it's not a Leica camera. It's just uh, <laughs> it's just funny how we judge cameras now. It's not quite up to par, but this camera is probably better than the last like ten. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Right? Well, I mean, well, I think also if you look at it from the fact that like they have Leica and you know the P20, mm -hmm. a lot of people have talked about it, even the P22. Yeah. So if this is mirroring that, you would can just... it? Can you take college photos? E? That's how we measure these phones from now on. <laughs> can you take college college photo shoot photos from now on? <laughs> <laughs> Can I meme this photo? That's how we judge all cameras. That was the P20 Pro, okay? That was, <laughs> that was different. No, so, so I would imagine that this would probably be sort of an iterative improvement over. The, I mean, like the like I have it right here, the the View 10. Um, the View 10 is actually a great photography experience. It takes a little while to get a feel for it. Like if you're really used to iPhones or if you're really used to Galaxies, Huawei and Honor cameras feel utterly alien the first time you start shooting with them and so i think a lot of people in this sort of knee-jerk review climate base a lot of that off of that very 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 first impression and then probably don't dig much deeper to try and get a handle on what you can do with it We're just saying, well, the, <laughs> a little bit and the saturation is this and the blacks are not as tight as that i was like can you tell any of this difference and i just well, have the time when i hear it and, and i believe three it. people i believe three people ever that say that stuff much <laughs> earlier and listen if it ain't marion I don't believe it. <laughs> so you know, I did a I did an 18 minute review on the camera for the View 10, and it's a fantastic photography experience, even in super low light and lacking image stabilization. It's mm -hmm. a perfectly capable camera. It just has a very different feel than what you would expect from an iPhone. Uh, the 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 issue that I'll be interested to see is if Honor starts bringing any kind of stabilization to video. I think the P20 Pro shows us that software stabilization is probably going to win. Um, there's so much that you can do algorithmically based on capturing do, gyroscopic do you, information. Do you like, I, I don't like, well, at 4K, I don't like what their stabilization does on the- No, I don't, but but I think it's I think it's the winner. It will be the winner. It's cheaper. Um, and, and, and also, <laughs> yeah. not only is it- It's cheaper in the end, that's well, gonna win. It's cheaper in a hardware component per device, but you also then have to spend a lot on a develop a software development team to really get the most out of, um, but you can eventually create a, a, a base that you work off of and then just oh yeah oh no no no, no. It, the, it, it's, the it's, cost of yeah. investment is high but that's also the same investment you would have put in if you have to put in a one time piece to it yeah but but this is something that I've mentioned in previous other camera reviews is the problem with optical image stabilization is the better we make that stabilization, the more you have to wiggle the lens. The more you have to wiggle the lens, the more um, you are warping the scene. And you'll see this a lot on LG cameras. It's actually very good image stabilization, but that's more of a benefit for stills. As you move the, the camera around in your hands while shooting video, that's where you see that jello -y wobble because the lens is actually warping the scene to try and compensate for your hand movements. And this is also why most hybrid stabilization sucks is because you have a warped image from moving the lens and then software is trying to crop 
based on a warped image, which is constantly a moving target. So if you get rid of optical image stabilization and you just go to a software processing um, effect, you actually end up with a smoother image. I, I, I think we saw a lot of this on the first pixel. It was stunningly smooth video. But the no. Pixel 2 is better because it does have OIS as well. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. no. But I mean, no, 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 no. It's not. It's different. It's not better. It performs a little bit better in some scenarios, and then it performs a lot worse in others. See, I, so I, we, just, we, I disagree, though, because I have not had a... I mean, the audio on that thing is terrible, which is why I just don't yeah. use it. But I've not had a situation where it hasn't worked well for me. That's in, in all the situations I've tried. So maybe yours is trash. Throw your phone away. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so no. you're, you're, you're <laughs> size of one <laughs> in the scientific study. <laughs> one is like, um, yeah, yeah. Just like. As I diplomatically <laughs> tell you, you're wrong. Um, no, but, but, it, but it's all about picking pros and cons and what it is that you're trying to achieve. Ultimately, though, at, once we start having a few more phones with some of this high ISO crazy burst, larger image sensors like huawei pulled off an almost lumia 1020 style sensor mm -hmm. on a triple camera phone without that giant oreo disc um from the uh from the 1020 days a few more pushes like that and i don't see i don't think we'll have any need for moving the lens on a phone anymore i think the the software sampling a quick burst of raw images to to drop that signal to noise ratio some of the crazy insane image processing that these phones are capable of and a little bit of a crop and you'll have much better video for it we're, we're sort of into the second or third generation of actual usable eis on a phone and it's already stunningly good considering where we've been uh yeah um sam anything you want to throw in there no i think one covered everything all right <laughs> let us move to sam's favorite phone Woo! oh yeah the red hydrogen has found a home actually two homes at t and verizon said they will be offering the phone um in the summer so summer is coming like like you know uh warren says is it in a carrier store? It's coming to two carriers, so it's it's gonna be right. there. It, it looks it's like, got potential to do well at that point. It looks like the phone is, is real. I know um, Andrew Edwards said he's going to go see it today, so I'm sure we'll have a. Video well, Danny Wiggins knows it's real. Check, check this checking account. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll never forget though. I remember like Danny Danny posted on Twitter. Danny Wingate was like, yo, I'm gonna get the red phone. So he did the pre-order. And next minute they charged him. He's like, yo, that phone ain't coming out so late. <laughs> 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 they <went>, uh, <laughs> You're like, we're taking the money now, man. <laughs> you have no choice. We're taking the money now. And it's funny because I was talking to Sam now. I was what? like, should I, should I put order in? Sam was like, yeah, man, like it's not gonna charge it now anyway. Like it'd be cool. I was like, after Danny posted, I was like, this is why I didn't go ahead. <laughs> But it seems like it's coming out. Um, you know, the uh, 3D display, a holographic display. Yeah. Um, stop. <laughs> Just stop. The, the holographic four view display. I, I'm more concerned about the camera modules mm -hmm. uh, that it does attach the front and the back. Yeah. Uh, at least they're adding a selfie camera, and that, you know, <laughs> which, you know, <laughs> maybe they thought it wasn't necessary because they're, you know, camera purists in a sense. But. Uh, I'd like to see what that those modules cost oh, and yeah. also how that applies. Because if you're paying thirteen hundred dollars for a phone, most likely your module will be around three to five hundred bucks. I'm can, the thing is gonna be can I take this to an event and can I record video with it? And yes, it exactly. like that? that's gonna be the um, test that every YouTuber takes and tries to, to tries to roll with it. Can I produce with this as good yeah. as a as good as my or close to as good as my standard equipment? Yeah, and it's um, it's coming to, at least it's coming gonna come with a 4,500 milliamp battery according to rumors and just, but so at least is which is gonna be needed for it because I wouldn't be surprised if Red says it shoots six K just for some you know I mean, even though like right now if it's running if it's running eight forty five or I know last year it was just running eight thirty five but it's running eight forty five then it, it will do four K. Maybe they can add some memory buffer to do 6K at a short amount. Like I would hope minutes. they just keep this at 4K for their first phone. I don't try to promise something stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope they learn from Essential in this. Like, don't don't do that. 
just don't yeah, just, just the give, world us, just give us 4K. Learn, learn from Essential, yeah. learn from Razor, just come out with a phone and do everything that you say it's going to do and actually be out and available. Yeah. 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 And, then, and then maybe Walmart will approve your phone to the third one. <laughs> Well, but it's also interesting, I and mean, we've gotten some several comments on this. I think Kyle uh, Kyle Ruggles even in the chat was talking about Red's reputation in camera space is affording them a lot of goodwill. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, OnePlus, we were deciding, OnePlus, are they getting a carrier deal? Are they even trying to get a carrier deal? And here's Red, like, we don't even know what we're doing making a phone, and we've admitted that we have no idea what we're doing. Hello. <laughs> but we have here's, sacks here's of money. <laughs> and, and it's going to be on Verizon. And you're like, holy crap. If this uh, all fails, it's a tax break for us. <laughs> well, exactly. I, like, this to me is not, I don't think this is a good way to launch a phone. I really don't. Because if, if you have a victory, great. But no one has a victory on their first, uh, you know, everybody falls on their first jump, right? Um, yeah, the iPhone didn't. <laughs> <laughs> iPhone didn't. It just it never fell. That one didn't, but... Almost but everyone else. Well, well, I mean, the, the iPhone also had the benefit of being drastically, drastically different yeah. from what we thought cell phones were. To the and having of, the great marketing genius behind exactly. it. Exactly. But, well, but, but also, having, having that awe of, wow. Well, this, and it was oh, also the iPod phone at peak iPod. You yeah, know, yeah, that was true. That was true. That, that Red, Red is, is, is an amazing camera company. Consumers have very little relationship with Red yeah. as a camera yeah. company. So again, they've got this amazing reputation. Video camera a company. In a, in a, in a, in, at a time when digital photography had not broken into cinema. So they blazed a new trail. They are coming to the smartphone market at peak smartphone. So if they can disrupt, I will be very excited. I am extremely skeptical that they can actually disrupt well, this um, in this current market, I mean, I think, well, well, I, I think I the best that Red is is aiming for is being the creator phone. I mean, that's yeah. what they just have. They're, to they're just like they're like LG made a great video video in their camera. Right. Hold my beer, exactly. <laughs> that I mean, that, that's story. literally that's literally what they they, have they felt do. challenged. They felt like they they felt like they're being challenged by um, LG. To to me is I, I I have a feeling that you know with the modules they talk about I, I I hope it's not too expensive, and yeah that's a red thing and you know people who own red cameras will tell you, but the thing is that if you want to be in that space you want to make it yeah it's a premium price of thirteen hundred the modules should not be too expensive where it really just becomes a you might as well get a regular camera yeah you might as well I might as well just add that money and even just buy a red camera yeah. you know at that yeah. point so that's. That's where it becomes tricky. Where it's like, look, fine, it's what thirteen hundred. Make those modules, or give me a bundle deal of some kind where I can I can experience it without feeling like, why am I spending this much when I could just save it's, or sell something else, add it to this, and buy myself. It's, here's an interesting thing: if they come out with this phone and some moderate success, and they have some good check marks, and even if they don't sell a lot, but it's positively seen as a light amongst the YouTube and the, you know creative community. Um, what what does it say? Another company such as Black Magic makes their, makes a phone all of a sudden, who makes a lot of those compact cameras and stuff like that, and they have a a, a whole from camera to software connection because they, yeah. they make that they, they make their own they make their own well, editing software. Their own workflow, yeah. Yeah, the whole well, workflow. What, what what really and and I'm glad you brought that up, Warren, because one of the things that I kind of wanted to circuitously get to that you just sort of cut directly to in a much more efficient fashion. Um, I don't think launching a phone is a good idea. What I would love to see is Blackmagic license and work with HTC. Make make a Blackmagic edition of a phone that we already understand. Or like, you know, we have well, a like a partnership up, with though. Huawei. What's well, that? Will people, will, will people want to pick that up, though? I mean, Not necessarily you know, HTC, but somebody. No, I but I'm just saying in general, like uh, work with another company. Samsung doesn't need you because Samsung does their own in-house in camera tech. But every other smartphone manufacturer on the planet that doesn't already have a, a, a camera solution would jump all over them to put black magic branding. Black you're, magic you're very right, because look at Huawei and Leica three years Huawei in and, and Nokia and Zeiss. Yeah. 
So that, that I think that would that would work well for you know even a company like Jame, right? Jame yeah. is rising up, right? Jame is coming is coming to the U.S. next year. If they partner with somebody like that and says, okay, look, let's let's spice up our cameras, let's take it to the next level, then for Black Magic or any of these kind of companies, you're not losing anything. You're actually applying your expertise and gaining from that in terms of revenue instead of you investing in making a phone which let's be honest, will probably sell 10,000 units. And then there's way less risk for all players involved. I mean, think about a Black Magic Edition Blackberry. No, I can't. Yeah. I can't, can't at all. Because, but but Blackberry. you should be able no. to because the Priv was an amazing improvement for Blackberry photography, and they had a partnership with Schneider. Like this, this is a good fit. I think this is a much better fit than trying to take all the risk yourself and make a phone when you don't know how to make a phone. Yeah. Well, it all depends on how well Red does. So if they do well with that name and it's getting buzz and they got YouTubers using it every other video and they, they got they sell maybe 10,000, maybe they sell 100,000 users. Who knows? If they get to anywhere at that point, which, you know, 100,000 is kind of piss poor for any of the smartphone, but for them, it's a great success because they're. Because they, they, they've got a new product out, a new branding, and a new sort of. Um, um, well, they'd have an actual product, consumer-facing consumer product. Facing product, they have yeah. consumer-facing product of that. If they see, if they see that success, I, I just don't see how Black Magic wouldn't go. Yeah, we could probably do the same thing too. You know, I think the, 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 Canon and Nikon haven't jumped into this space either. I know they're all trying to protect their brands, and they're all trying to make they sure make like, too, oh, they you make, buy our cameras, but they make too much money the other way. They they just but, make too much money on the DSLR, and the fact is, they got their ass kicked already. I'll, no, who buys a point and shoot anymore? Yeah. Who buys a basic but, point and shoot? But that's they exactly that it. Out. Is they they could be they could also be getting paid out the nose for a licensing deal. licensing. Yeah, uh, I, I think what what Red has here that that a lot of other companies um, really don't have is a is a proven track record of their modules. Their modules make their base device really like really improves on your base device very well. So if they can do the same thing with uh, a phone, let's, let's just say it's a high price for an entry level, but you, you enter their space at $1,300 and you add certain features. And before you know it, you might be able to do like, you know, full feature length movies using a phone. And if they can here, actually push towards that, that's where they win. If they can't here's, do here's, that, here's my problem. problem with that. And you, you've actually just brought a point. That phone should cost eight hundred bucks. Ideally, it should cost like less than a grand, or around just a grand, and then three hundred for yeah, a module. It, it, it well, should, should come with a module because, at thirteen hundred. Because you know? what is probably peaking the price is that stupid holographic display that they want to put up there. I, I don't, don't understand what that why? holographic display is why? going to add. What three D is already dead. <laughs> so what are you trying to do? To, to me, to me, that is the most unattractive selling point on this device. Because, you know, when I heard Red's making the phone, I'm like, okay, camera. That camera is going to be like sick off the point. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about modules, right? You know, you're adding, you're, you're bringing out the modular aspects that we all talked about, but you're bringing it for a specific purpose in just photography and film. I get that. But then you throw in a holographic display. I'm like, if I'm going to now edit on this thing or quickly edit, like now you can do on many on phones, why do I need a holographic display when no one is watching holographic content? Yeah. yeah, but the other thing I'm well, thinking, I'm thinking with this is that I don't think the intent of this is to edit on the phone. I no, think but, for even, but even not editing on the phone, I'm just saying that like, who's going to watch holographic content? On, like, I'm make, to me, it's 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 dumbfounded because Red is uh, is a company that makes cameras for creators. This is a creator's phone. I mean, how you look at it? So, am I going to shoot holographic content for only ten thousand to hundred thousand people? Well, what they're saying is they're going to be cutting edge games to use these four view um, camera and also the holographic display, so you it's can turn. It's called Nintendo 3DS, man. Yeah, but they said, but no, but this time around, you should be able to look at things from different angles. You know, the different angles. Cool. I mean, I just get a holograms <laughs> at that point. No. So, so, so here's also the last, the last little uh, gap in in Red's armor. Here is. I don't believe the phone is going to be the killer module for content creation. Um, I've been a huge proponent of making more stuff with phones. I, like I did all of my vlogging from CES, from soup to nuts, shot, wrote scripts, did voiceover, edited, rendered 4K video, uploaded to YouTube, created thumbnails, everything from my phone. Um, 
it was really only feasible to do that by putting my SIM card in a BlackBerry Key 1 and then doing all of my work from an LG V30. If I had had my SIM card in a V30 on a busy show floor, getting tons of emails, <laughs> getting tons of messages from my phone, then you end up with the worst of both worlds. Either I completely shut myself off from communication so I can get my, my filming done, or my filming is constantly being interrupted by my stream of, of media notifications, alerts, mm. etc. Red... I don't know that Red has a solution for that if they make a phone. You can now put all these crazy modules on your phone and then not be able to use your phone <laughs> while you're <laughs> shooting your video. Like that's, that's not point. gonna be a great solution for a lot of people out there. I actually don't even think the intent, the intent of this thing being a phone is being an actual smartphone for use. I think the intent of this is like, oh, you can connect this to an LT connection so you can upload somewhere or you can oh, shoot no, it I, somewhere. I, I get all that. Like, but, but, somewhere. But that's going to be a frustrating experience for a lot of people who actually know what they're doing when their their phones and cameras are separate for a reason. I mean, there have been plenty of rigs that have allowed you to, to improve the cinematic qualities of smartphone video. You can get rigs that use DSLR style lenses on our tiny little camera sensors like this. This isn't a complete unknown, but we don't typically see high-end production going off of the devices that people use for their own personal communication. And there, there is a good reason to keep those separate. Yeah, no, I, I do agree. I think it's just going to be interesting to see how it pans out and what, what they decide to do. Uh, for me, I just think the, the holographic display um, just doesn't make sense. That you're just, me, you're no. just mad from the whole 3D, HTC 3D. I mean, I mean, yeah, because <laughs> it's not, it's not even practical. And again, like, it, well, well me, okay, okay. If Red gives you some nice martinis, will you all, will you support it then? No, <laughs> <I'm not laughs> no. I mean, but but let's be look, but let's be let's just to be yeah, serious. But, but no, but seriously like, though, it, it is. I, I, I no, I agree with you 100 percent on it. It's the least attractive thing about this phone that I'm hoping that they're just trolling us and it's just a regular display. I, I really hope they're trolling us. Don't tell me, 4D graphics, turning off. And, and they're, they're like, I'll, I'll turn it off before they get done whatever they name it. Does a regular red camera shoot for 4D holographic? No. So why are you giving me a display that does that? If one of your cameras actually did that, I would go, well, okay, there's they someone who can make content. But they don't have a camera that does that. They gotta be trolling us. Yeah. So they, they mean, have to be trolling. For me, that, that aspect we got, we got trolled at the like, sprint event. They trolling us here too. <laughs> we're, we were being trolled. <laughs> All right. Uh, our last topic is something a little fun, but also Terminator scary. Uh, Boeing just tested its first um, autopilot helicopter. Um, yeah. You know, just, this is not a drone. This is a full fledged helicopter. They're flying by itself. You know, and uh, we'll, take well, it, well wouldn't that make it a drone? It was flying by itself in the air. Well, I mean, it, it is. Well, it's, 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 most drones are considered unmanned, right? But this is a helicopter that can also be manned. It's manned. a full scale helicopter yeah. then. Yeah. So, yeah. hybrid drone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess. I guess. Yes. Hybrid drone could be it. But yeah. It's it's cool. I mean, the 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 it's interesting, you know, like I've just thought about this when I saw this and I saw also the Google Ledger and the fact that automation, AI, machine learning and you know that path that we are on right now, you know, where uh, everyone is racing to to uh, autonomous vehicles on a large scale. Google showed its project X uh, vehicle service. Uh, you know, we have Tesla, we have um, you know, even Uber and all these ride sharing companies do the same thing. And then we, you know, uh, I was going to add Boston Robotics, just their latest robot that they create, you know, the, oh, the, the one that can jump. The one oh, that boy. Can jump was jogging around and I was jogging, like, and then he stops uh, and jumps. I'm like, oh boy, they're coming for us. I was like, Terminator with self flying helicopter and then machine. Hey, I will drop kick, I will drop kick that thing in a second. <laughs> he would still just get up and go like this. This, this not, a, not if you get a headshot. I, I'm not Thor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's headshots for life. It's an interesting time, especially with uh, all these things that in five to ten years, man, like our our world would be very different. You know, yeah, it's gonna be cars driving themselves. 
uh, planes taking off by themselves, which tech not you can technically land one by themselves right now, but you know, all well, that it's, it's, it's various, it's very assisted right That's, now. Yeah. yeah. So, but, um, but it's going to be very different. And then, you know, we'll have the Boston dynamic robots controlling the cities. <laughs> oh, well, DDT that thing in a heartbeat. <laughs> Come hit me the wrong way. It's catching an L. No, no, it's not the, the, <laughs> the, the walking L. robots are not the ones that scare me. It's the dog like ones. You know? Oh God. From uh, those, black mirror. No, 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 no. The one they have. At, it it looks like, exactly like what Black Mirror had, yeah. too. It's That's what it looks like, yeah. a Black Mirror robot. Yeah. And, you know, they, you know they, they were like, it couldn't open doors and just added an arm. I was like, why did you all go and do that? Yeah. Like, seriously, yeah. why? <laughs> like, it's already, I can stump it to no, it has an arm and can open doors, run. Just run. And, and, and banana peels, though. And what? banana peels are its weakness. It, they show where they, they put banana peels and it just slipped. And then I, all I'm just saying is, if if there are any companies the out cart, there, makes sense. if there are Sorry. any companies out there that are doing exciting research into portable uh, EMP style devices, that would be <laughs> would be the right time to start investing in those companies. Anyone oh yeah, a, or just go anyone? online and research EMP bucket. <laughs> anyone making a portal gun? Is anyone making a portal gun? Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Need the portal gun. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be a lot. But anyway. Uh, I think we've come to the end of the show this week. Uh, it was a lively show, a lot of stuff. Thank you guys for joining in. Um, and we have another giveaway. So we haven't given stuff in a while. You know, it's spring. So there's a lot of stuff to go away. Is it so, spring? <laughs> is it spring? Yeah. Um, uh, outside yet? And I know Juan has helped me look for winners, but let me just tell you what you could win. We've got a couple of headsets. You know, there's a lot of headsets around. So uh, this is a wireless gaming headset from Logitech. I really cannot remember the model number. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really because it's not listed. It is really not um, listed. On it's the, the good one. It is, getting, it's a good one because it came from the wall. So it's good. It's the good <laughs> one. That's a wireless gaming headset for from Logitech. Work on your PC. Uh, we also have a headset here from Grain Audio. Uh, this is, oh, do uh, I need to pick two? Uh, oh, oh uh, four. Uh, this oh, is a, okay. This, it's a wood wood grain uh, headset. Nice wood trimming. Mm -hmm. You know, lovely stuff right there. And then we also have a wireless sports headset from Plantronic, the Backbeat Five Hundred Five. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm like a five hundred five. Right. And uh, and then uh, finally, this one, this one is selective. This one you can say you want it uh, because I know not a lot of people will. But I do have this nice foldable keyboard but it comes together you can't just pick one of the two this is from microsoft nice portable bluetooth foldable keyboard really nice that comes with the microsoft continuum deck oh so that. um you know i know um technically you can't use this anything other than a windows phone i believe um, <laughs> that keyboard is awesome i, I yeah, use keyboard keyboard is nice. pretty dope though. i like the keyboard the keyboard is nice uh, but i just don't use it that much so um, you must want both of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, keyboard and continue dog. So, at least uh, Juan, can you pick the first three for the headsets, and then whoever wants that can just stay there. And out. while Juan okay. is picking, so oh, if you're so done. doing um doing my normal scroll, random land on the mouse cursor, and then I, I don't know if these people have won recently, but <laughs> I don't see. know that that's, <laughs> that that's really going to matter so much. Um, first off, I've got James W. Uh, James, I don't think James is one. No, congratulations, James. James. You won yourself that Logitech headset that has no name. Lord Buddha is not allowed to win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lou, next, Lou's trying to get some. <laughs> uh, next up, I've got Lover of Tech. Lover of Tech, congratulations. And then, uh, lastly, I have RVDLAAR. No, definitely haven't won either. Um, okay, cool. Those are those are the three that I got through random mouse scrolling. All right, good. Love of Tech, RG. Say something in the chat. RG, What's that? Juan, Juan, could you like tag them in the chat? Because yeah. I really yeah, 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 we'll do. It. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, James said nice at least, so you know he's he's there. Yeah. So yeah, guys, uh, definitely reach out to me. Um, how did I do the reach out again? Because you know YouTube doesn't do this thing correctly. Uh, Twitter. Twitter. Yes. Yeah. Twitter. Yeah. Twitter with your uh, just a link to your YouTube channel, the handle, and then um, you know, we'll go from there. And yeah, whoever wants that Microsoft keyboard and continue, man, speak now. Speak now. Yeah, stop. Because uh, <laughs> your Windows phone is definitely in need of something like that. 
<laughs> yeah, I was just saying, look at these awesome keyboard right here. Woo, look at that. Look at that keyboard. Woo, so beautiful. Oh, wow, look at that. Um, yeah. But Sam, what did you want to say quickly before? Uh, I just saw this uh, headline about um, Qualcomm know. laptop and um, offering, you know, uh, I guess unlimited, unlimited. Um, what's it called? Sprint coverage. Yes. Yeah, yeah, coverage with Sprint. That's actually pretty cool. I think that's that's a really <laughs> great way to get into the market and uh, compete against Intel's. So, yeah, the uh, the new uh, always connected PCs, which is a segment that uh, Qualcomm eight thirty five chip laptops are running on. Um, there's a deal. I believe it's through Microsoft stores. Um, if you buy one, you get uh, unlimited Sprint coverage for free till the end of twenty eighteen. Yep. So you've got six months of uh, free internet on that before you decide to do whatever you want to do. But uh, it's a nice way. Um, the other thing I wanted to just touch on quickly, and I'm not sure what will happen, but rumor is that Microsoft is working on a 10-inch $400 Surface. Um, uh, part of the rumor is that it's going to be powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon chip. Another rumor says it's going to be an Intel chip, a Quai 5. And I'm like, I don't know. If yeah, it's Quai 5 for 400. Yeah, it's like, there's just it. no way the you can. The chip itself costs $400. The chip itself costs $400. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody yeah. wants Core M's, so let's just go ahead and, 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 and say it's a Snapdragon. Yeah, yeah. I, I would I mean, I would gladly do that Snapdragon mm -hmm. app. That 400 price, if it's a surface type build, it's not going to be the same premium materials, but it's still at least styling would be nice. Give me eight inch in a booklet format, and you, I'm sold. Looks like Ronald Collins wants that continuum, Doc, because he likes useless things. No, <laughs> he wants the keyboard because that keyboard is badass. Uh, wait, wait. So, Ronald, you, you taking both? I mean, he's going to have to take, take both. All right, Ronald. Yeah. You're going to send both anyways. I'm sending both to you, Ronald. Don't worry, Ronald. Got it. Windows phones are going to come back someday. <laughs> someday. There is there is actually a developer who's got Windows 10 for ARM running on a Lumia 950. Oh, wow. Hilarious. Like, they, they, they refuse, these Windows phones refuse to die. Oh. Wow. Well, you have to live first before you can die. Oh. Wow. Okay, on that note, <laughs> we are <laughs> rounding up the show. Yeah, with that elbow there from, from Warren. Um, Stone Cold Stunner. We, we've come to the part of the show where we just talk about what we have on the channel, what can we expect next week. So, you know, Warren, since you killed it, you might as well continue. Uh, <laughs> what do you have on your channel? What can we expect next week? Uh, next week, I'll return back to video because I know I've been gone for a little while because a lot of stuff's been going on in the background, but I'll be making my way back. Hopefully, I'll have some video shot with the A7, um, yeah. God, I hate the A7 R Mark III that just got in the house from B&H to check out for the next 30 days or so. I, I, I dubbed it the Jesus camera, according to according to all the shots I've seen E taken. It's just like literally, you know, beautiful. It just it just spits out beautiful. Apparently, that's all that it does. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for the low light, low light coverage of that thing is is fantastic man it's pretty incredible uh, yeah look, looking forward to doing that i'll be next week i'll be in new york for the uh what is it is that an nda event <laughs> before um, i say it <laughs> no no the ace is having an event oh, okay okay no i'm just making sure because the event the week before <laughs> that i couldn't make because i was in mexico was an nda event and i didn't want to mix the two up like i'm going here oh crap <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll be there and I'll hopefully I'll test it. I got actually a new tripod too. I don't think I, oh, I, I put it up. This new tripod coming to this company called uh, Oben. And it's a pretty nice carbon fiber tripod that uh, BNH wants me to try it as well too. Um, it, it's actually tall enough that I that it can actually point the camera into my face. So that's always a good thing. Because <laughs> tri tripods and me have an issue, just kind of a height issue when I want to actually point. And see and, and, and touch like you, that. You look at Sam and like and Juan. They're like, oh, we don't have those problems. I, I got a couple of short ones here for them. You know, just, just, uh, <laughs> just your faces they, alone. <laughs> just your faces right. alone. No, I actually like, just got a new carbon fiber tripod specifically because like I need this to be taller than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have the opposite problem. I need this to at least get to my chin. If it could get to at least my chin, yeah. that's a good thing. Oh, yeah, I it's, it's deceptive wrong. because we're all in these like little square. Is talking about it on the screen, Warren. You're what? Like, I come up but, to your armpit? Yeah, I'm maybe. Pretty, maybe. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it, it's, it's deceptive. I get that a lot, especially when yeah. I go to events and people meet for the first time. Whoa. They go, "Oh, whoa!" <laughs> so, yeah, like, because like, most videos you see me, I'm either sitting down, 
<laughs> sitting down and I crop it a certain way because I can't get the can't get the angle high enough, or I put it in a space where you only see the top half of me, so you can't tell the difference. You know, usually when I do those videos with the computer behind me, the desk is standing up, <laughs> and I have to make it move up and all the way nearly <laughs> to, to to make it work. So the tall people problems, especially when shooting video. He, he understands some. He understands some. <laughs> Yeah. This frame, always framing issues. Go look. Go look at the. Uh, is that national car video that we did at CES up that I did with uh, Andrew Edwards? Yeah, that, that, was, that, that, was, that was interesting one. That was interesting. If you look at the the the, the there is a great example of height difference right there. <laughs> All right, um, Juan. What about you? What can we expect, and what do you have? Uh, yeah, we actually had kind of a rough week on Newegg. We had this major audio gremlin pop up, but we were talking about VR and gaming, and uh, we got to show off some of our uh, Beat Saber moves. So there's a really funny video of uh, the very first time Trisha and I played Beat Saber, um, and I'm I'm maybe uh, showing off some pretty fancy Footloose uh, style footwork. Yeah, it's all um, over Newegg front page. Just yeah, Juan and Trish. And they, <laughs> like, uh, they, uh, they're, they're going all in, man. I, I, <laughs> I like having a little job security, which is, which is pretty nice. Um, for, for my personal channel, I'm going to be covering some more audio kit, the creative uh, K3 Plus, this amazing little uh, uh, sound recording USB audio interface that can also work with your phone. And then um, I'm going to be spending some more time with the LG G7. I published last night, I published the full audio review. And this is one of the things that bugs me. The, one of the main focuses of an LG phone now has been audio. Uh, the speaker chamber, the, the hi-fi mode with the quad DAC. And then in a lot of reviews, you'll see someone talk about audio stuff for like 30 seconds. So if you like your ears and you want a high quality music or video movie listening experience, um, I do have the full audio review published on my Patreon page. Uh, that those will now be Patreon exclusives, but it's a 19 minute video. If you really want to know what this phone can do. And next week, I'm going to have the full camera review for the G7 going to that Patreon page, too. All right, cool. Uh, on my end, since uh, it's been two weeks, uh, speaking of audio, we did our speaker test between the G7, the iPhone P20 Pro and the Galaxy S9 Plus uh, to find out just who is the loudest, you know, just just in terms of volume uh you can check that out uh it's interesting because especially check the comments because you see how people fight for other things and yeah and they're wrong you know. <laughs> i mean I, 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 I have a sound meter there and people are like you point it in the wrong direction and things like that i was like the number is there it's, it's there. right there just your just device the, loses Good yeah day. just look at the numbers um we also have some of our android p coverage um, and there's also a video on just uh, who does gestures better, iPhone versus the Pixel 2 XL. So check that out. Uh, we dropped our review of the A7 III. Uh, that's the camera I use now. It's absolutely, it, look, if you want to get a uh, mirrorless, $2,000, this is the camera to pick up. Now you can get better. Don't, 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 don't say it's just $2,000. No, no, the, with, the, the, with the kit lens, it's $2,000. Yeah. Yeah, um, if you want to get the lens I have, that's an extra thousand two hundred. But you know, again, it's still if you want to start off, that is probably one of the best cameras to start off. I, it, it has its Sony issues with menus and stuff like that. Thank you, Daniel, for coming to clarify and set everything up for me because it, and it took him like an hour. <laughs> Just so you, you gave a Panasonic guy a Sony camera. <laughs> uh, he went to test it out. Like he was like, "Dude, man, this camera is, is fantastic. It's, it it has its ups and downs. It things that it just can't do as well as Panasonic in certain some aspects." Um, if you watch Westworld, join us every Sunday night at ten uh, twenty p.m. We do our recap. We do our recap of last week's episode, which is really good. Uh, lots of surprises in that. We also have our Deadpool non spoiler review for all the of those who are w waiting to check out Deadpool. Definitely go see that. Uh, first look at the OnePlus 6 and what it has to offer. And finally, um, since LG also made a claim about having one of the brightest displays out there on the market, we decided to do a direct sunlight uh, brightness test. And again, I just put it there, guys, and pointed the camera to the G7, the uh, S9 Plus, iPhone, and P20 Pro to find out who just you know does well in sunlight. So check out those videos. Uh, next week, I... 
We'll be having a new build video coming up. I have to do. Uh, also, we're doing some stuff in VR. We have the Mirage and we have the Oculus Go. Um, so we're going to do some stuff around that as well. And then we have our final review of the um, the Samsung Q9F TV. Uh, that's actually dropping on Monday. So check that out to see our final thoughts and what we think about that television. So anyway, guys, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for joining. Again, all of you who won in our impromptu giveaway please hit me up on twitter and i'll tr i will definitely ship them out to you this week uh, ronald i got you there man send you that keyboard and continue dark <clears throat> uh <laughs> check out all, all the channels definitely check out mr warren bowman at bw1.com on youtube follow him on twitter instagram and facebook all bw1.com and then of course mr juan carlos back now you can find him at some gadget guy on youtube Twitter, Instagram. Also watch him at 1 p.m. Eastern time uh, on New Egg's channel, uh, his show, which he check out the last one just for the dance moves, strictly just for the dance moves. Because he had, you know, the old one that I've never seen. Did, yeah. did, you, uh, did, did, did he hit the out. did he hit the shoot dance? And he goes, shoot, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not there, but he looked like he was about to get there. And I was getting close. <laughs> I, was getting close. <laughs> I was still uh, focusing you, on my lightsaber moves, but it yeah. was it was right on the cusp. You can also um, uh, follow Sam on uh, Twitter. It is Black Iron underscore Man, and myself. And it's Border Work Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, as well as here on YouTube. Thank you very much, and always enjoy your entertainment. Bam.